New Zealand, a country of dramatic splendor and geographical diversity, offering those who choose to explore this alluringly beautiful land some of the most challenging terrain on earth. Taking full advantage of New Zealand's scenic playground, the Southern Traverse Adventure Race attracts world-class athletes from around the globe. Expertise is required in a diverse range of disciplines, and they call this fun. Competitors race non-stop, day and night, in suffocating heat, pouring rain and freezing cold, pushing themselves to the limits of human endurance and beyond. Although safety considerations restrict entry to four-person teams, the individual athletes within the team must commit to serious training far from the gym. My name is Andrew Peacock. I'm a medical doctor. Three weeks before the Southern Traverse started, I received an email from the organisers offering me a position on a sponsored team. I knew that I was fit, but what I wasn't prepared for was the reality of adventure racing. From Australia, Dr. Andrew Peacock is an accomplished mountaineer and champion kayaker. But Andrew has no experience as a member of an adventure racing team. A very short time into the race, after only 24 hours in a five-day event, I was already at a point where I knew that this was going to be one of the hardest physical and mental challenges that I have ever faced. What you're learning in this event is that you don't have a good tolerance of discomfort at all. You know, I'm going to be suffering badly in this race because I'm doing it with three people who are very good. Andrew will join the very experienced Team Air New Zealand. The three other members of my team are Eric Billieu, who is a Queenstown resident and runs a kayaking business there, Louise Stiger, a British woman who lives in France with her partner Francois Alamo, who is a mountain guide. So far so good, you know, I think uh, we've got four different countries here, four different very strong personalities. Um, it could be really fantastic, we could have a really good race and get on really, really well, or it could be a complete nightmare, you know, who knows. Andrew's teammates are veterans of over 20 adventure races. Eric alone has competed six times in the Southern Traverse. I've won the Southern Traverse twice and I've sworn several times in my life that I would never be in a, in a team pulled together at the last minute because it's just wow. really hard to have people who never knew each other before and suddenly they're going to spend five days together in the bush and go through physical pain and frustration. Oh, very tired. Ooh. We're on this road here, mate. No, we did the turn off here. No, we didn't. I only had a couple of days to get to know the rest of my team, and I realised that our goals were very different. Even before the race, personality clashes within Team Air New Zealand were surfacing. We're this, we're it's been like this for four days, so why start now? I'm not, uh, because everybody was waiting for just you. Well, hold on a minute, I can remember two or three times during today when we were waiting for you, like for yeah, the photo and stuff, so I didn't have a go. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. then you got double standards. <laughs> Andrew is a very black and white person, he's very Aussie, you know, calls a spade a spade, doesn't muck around, uh, he's got something to say, something bugs him, he just spits it out and keeps going. Today I am nervous, <laughs> it's difficult for me because I don't speak English and it's a very, very difficult race. 188 athletes from 14 countries make up the 47 four-person teams competing in this year's Southern Traverse. American team NOC Perception and Sabah 2000 from Malaysia are two of them. My name is Trace Thayer. I'm the captain of team NOC Perception from Bryson City, North Carolina. Uh, we're uniquely comprised of two couples, myself and my husband, Norman Greenberg. And the other couple we're racing with is Mac and Deb Brown, also from Bryson City, North Carolina. 
One, two, three, up, up, Where are we and going? away. Left. What you put in your stuff? Right? I put some rocks. You told me to bring some rocks. My name is Tez Laurie, and uh, my team is Saba 2000. We're from Borneo. You can see my guys here, Kona, Guanis, and Klaus. Guanis and Kona is from um, Saba, and Kona is uh, Guanis' wife. In fact, uh, Guiano, she had a husband. You know, he's been champion there, uh, climbing the highest mountain in this part of the world. I mean, in Southeast Asia. And then uh, Kona, the wife, uh, run marathons, uh, uh, climb mountains, and all that sort of thing. Uh, myself and Klaus are expatriates. Klaus is an engineer, I'm a pilot. Yeah, I'm from Denmark. Well, I'd say our weaknesses will be the cold weather at night, um, navigation at night, and uh, we'll be a bit slow in the kayak. Our kayak's big. Yeah, I'm, I'm small. I think I got a problem to pedal. <laughs> Everybody's psyched up and uh, we're ready to just get this thing started. Yeah, I love paddle. It'll be my favorite. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm relaxed, ready to go. Sun's shining, so I'm happy. I'm not sure how the way I relate to people is going to affect the way we all behave as a team in this particular race. Uh, it will depend a lot on the circumstances in which we find ourselves during the race. I've done adventure races with a lot of very different people from very different backgrounds, um, and it's always gone very well. The starting line is Pahara Beach, near Nelson at the top of New Zealand's South Island. During the five-day, 443-kilometre race, the competitors will climb four mountains, and conditions may range from blazing sun to blizzard. The first section is a 40-kilometre sea kayak. Jeff Hunt, race organiser. They do know what's ahead of them now. Five days of hell, probably. Um, if we get the weather that we normally get, They'll find snow and wind and rain somewhere along the line. I've done a bit of paddling. It's really not my sport. So I said to Andy before, you know, you're the paddler. You tell me what rhythm you want. And, you know, it worked very well. The athletes are supported by crews who carry the gear and supplies needed for each leg. Four and a half hours after starting, Kiwi team Star and Garter, led by Steve Gurney, arrive at the first transition point. Steve and Kathy Lynch have successfully competed in many adventure races around the world. Their younger teammates, Nathan Fave and Aaron Prince, are equally competent. 30 minutes later, Air New Zealand leave the water. The team are positioned well up the field and morale is high. How many mixed teams ahead of us? Uh, two or something. Two mixed teams? No. You I sure? Don't. No, I don't. I think it's only one, isn't it? Oh. Um, All right, where's the spare towel then? Um, can we have the, the backpacks, guys? Yeah, I need my red backpack, guys. The Kiwis are looking strong as they power into the 55 kilometre bike ride. The sun is shining. The birds are singing, only 400 kilometers to go. Although they wasted no time at the transition, a slow kayak section has left the Americans placed in 25th position. The leading teams are halfway through the ride. Air New Zealand are in sixth place. The Malaysians are having problems. Unfortunately, uh, Guanis had some uh, cramps in one of his arms, so we had to tow over the kayak for a long part of the race. That wore us out quite a bit. All right, off you go. Off you go. We were getting a bit cold, the uh, Malaysian guys in our team. OK. Uh, Guanis was looking a bit tired because of his uh, cramp. We're feeling a bit dispirited because there was a lot of guys uh, in front of us at that stage. 
It used to be the plaster would be around. No, it would come straight off. Yeah. <laughs> Nine hours after they started, the Kiwis reached the second transition point. They stopped to refuel for 12 minutes. Well, you haven't had a look at the map yet. I'm trying to go over Mount Arthur before it gets dark. No injuries, just kind of be careful. Just kind of keep it moving. 5.15 in the evening, the Kiwis start an all-night 26-kilometre mountain trek. The other teams are still on their bikes. No one had appreciated just how demanding the hill climb would be, least of all, Andrew. Well, the mountain bike section um, started off fine, and um, then he obviously got a bit bored of going at our pace, so we had to shoot off into the distance, and of course have to wait for us afterwards anyway. Um, he was really just doing interval training up this huge hill, and before he got to the top of it, he hit the wall. <laughs> I hadn't managed to pace myself properly. I probably didn't eat enough and or drink enough early on in that bike ride. And towards the end of the hill climb, I was extremely tired. Of course, if you know how to pace yourself, if you accept, if you accept to pace yourself, then it's less likely that you're going to blow up. Not enough uh, muscular endurance in my legs, I think. Yeah. Didn't eat enough. Yeah. Hit the wall. Run out of tickets, is what we say. Yeah. You know, tickets for the bus to keep going further. He doesn't know how to pace himself. And he's already completely knackered. What is that? We're all tired, but also he's got cramps and everything. So, um, I'm not talking to him, basically. <laughs> no, I don't think Andrew's going to finish. We need to stay more together as a team. Um, and things will be right. It's difficult for Andy. Ah, uh, what a nightmare. <laughs> Wait and see. It's a long night for Andy, I think. The race organizers are pleased. Storm clouds are building. Rain and snow is forecast. Now the fun really begins. While many teams have moved on to the mountain trek, the slower teams have yet to finish the first bike ride. As a member of their support crew sings to lift their spirits, somewhere back on the road, the Malaysians are struggling. The, the Japanese are coming. With the Malaysians? No, I didn't see the Malaysians. Rahmat Bagya Tuhan Kurni What do you think, Tasman? Well, how does he feel now? Ah, uh, he can't even stand up. Can't stand up. Can he cycle down the hill? No. No, no, no. Well, we'll have to uh, sort of support him. Try and so carry him up there. There's a hut at the top. We'll sort of carry him up there. He's the strongest guy in the group, so actually he, he doesn't really get tired. Uh, he's pretty good, actually. Well, he just got cramps in his legs. He couldn't cycle. We had to pull him. We pulled him on a rope on a bike all afternoon since 3 o'clock. And then he vomited a couple of times. He's not really used to the cold weather because he's, he comes from Borneo. So I think the cold weather is something to do with it. Normally, you wouldn't expect to get that until three or four days into the race, not the first day. His fleece, where's his uh, thermal shirt? It's just pretty weak because he's pushed, pushed a bit hard. Oh, strolling, strolling. Air New Zealand have been trekking uphill for six hours. Okay. Yeah. Especially enjoying the moonlight. No, no wind is just great. Pretty tough, mate. I'm doing it tough. Well, I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other at the moment. Yeah, tired, you know, it's been a pretty grueling day. Um, jumping from the kayak to the bikes, that was really long, that bike ride. 
Lots of uphill, really hard work. 3 a.m. The support crews are relaxing. <laughs> well in the lead, the Kiwis complete the 26-kilometre mountain trek. Nice. 46. Steve. Hey. Hey, hey team. Yo. Sandy has a good point that the navigation would be made less risky if we have a, a good sleep now. The Kiwis reward themselves with an indulgence. One hour's sleep. Air New Zealand are also feeling tired. Long, really hard work, very slowly. The team, uh, it's a bad time for the team because it's uh, three o'clock morning and uh, it's difficult this time. Well, it's been very difficult and hard. I'm suffering pretty badly at the moment. Yeah, very tired, very sleepy. Keep falling asleep, but. Every step, so I keep sort of tripping all the time. Um, so I'm trying to eat a sandwich to see if that'll wake me up, but uh, quite difficult to eat now as well. My stomach's a bit churned up too, so. Uh. Well, these guys have been helping me out a ton, taking my pack and stuff like that, which is excellent. I feel pretty pathet pathetic, actually. It's no picnic for the Malaysians either. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm one of the doctors. Of yes, please come right in. Have you got a light on? Yeah. Yes, we have. Come on. Yes. Not too bad, but just enough to show what's up with him. Okay. Is he feeling weak or strong? No, he's feeling weak. I'm not able to stand up, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. It could be just a virus. But whatever I think. It would be a poor decision to keep going when it feels like this. Mm. And be resting food and things. Mm -hmm. OK. You can be picked up by, by your crew and you won't incur any time penalties. That's what they just told me. Oh, serious? Yeah. We'll have to have a talk to the, the organisers and see whether we can continue on with the three men crew. Oh, you're travelling in New Zealand. <laughs> We'd like to fly, but we're not quite flying. <laughs> I'm knackered, I need a rest. And, um, and they've just decided to wander off down the valley. And unfortunately, for me to sort of continue at any sort of pace, I really need a bit of a... just a rest and a, eat and a drink now. So, um, yeah, it's not working very well. I think he's beginning to realise that, you know, he can actually use our help. And he's not going off and refusing help anymore. So, we've carried his backpack and lighten his load and help him with his jacket, take it on and off and hopefully it'll help him to get along. So we'll see. Hello Louisa. Okay. Long time no see. Dawn day two. Following their luxurious one hour's sleep, the Kiwis have commenced the 101 kilometer bike ride. Their support crew struggle to keep up. After an exhausting 13-hour trek, lines are being drawn and the cracks are widening in Team Air New Zealand. I totally understand the fact that they are used to racing in a certain way for an endurance race. I don't really have a clue about the way that occurs. So it very much to me feels like it's three people and me as a team, which is not a team. No. The end bit of the walk just was endless and on and on and on. It was very frustrating because we were really dying to go hard. To tell the complete truth, Andy doesn't know if physically he can take it. That is the main question he's asked me, you know. He said, well, I don't know if physically I can take this whole thing, you know. It was just a very long and nasty hike that took longer than I thought it would. Just kept going and going. For Andy, it's a totally new world that he's exploring now. 
like endurance races is nothing like what he's done before. I just want to finish the race. Very hot today, yeah. Also and I were talking and we said, you know, we reckon this is our last ever adventure race. We've we've had enough of just things going wrong that shouldn't have to go wrong and I don't think we will ever do an adventure race again. Air New Zealand sleep as they race, three together, one alone. While they sleep, another team has a serious problem. The Malaysian support vehicle has driven off the road. Luckily, no one is injured. We Muslim, we believe strongly in being fated, you know, that your time is up, your time is up. We came for the race, and then um, we'll see. Well, we're just going into town to get another van, and uh, the other guys are going straight to the site to uh, give the keys to the uh, recoverers, and we'll meet them up there, get all the gear out of the van, and uh, try and get on with the race. The Americans are only one hour behind Air New Zealand. They plan to eat at the transition and continue without sleep. Deb feels ill and the team progress more slowly than Trayson would like. For me, it's extremely hard because I'm, you know, I've beaten Steve Gurney in a race before, so, you know, I usually don't have a one or I don't have a one or a two in front, in front of the number of where I'm placing, you know. It's usually, every race I've done this year has been top three, so. The legs are quite, quite a bit longer than I had anticipated in my head, and, and so you're just kind of having to push a lot, a lot more than, than I was thinking. As the Americans commence the 101-kilometer bike ride, race organizer Jeff Hunt closes the door on the Malaysians. Yeah, you had some information or a request about the Saba 2000 team. Oh, with just your, your views on when they come back here, that uh, they can decide whether they want to continue on the course and where they should go to if they want to do that? Um, no, they won't be able to continue on the course. I spoke to Taz last night briefly about it. They really have eliminated themselves by uh, not having a vehicle and getting vehicle transport, so unfortunately they won't be able to continue. Yeah, we're disappointed. We tried to convince the organiser to let us uh, restart, but uh, we couldn't, couldn't get back in. We'll have to go home and start training again and start getting ready for uh, another race of this sort of length. <laughs> For the remaining teams, the next major hurdle is the 40-kilometer second mountain trek, in the middle of which lies the rappelling section. A navigational error has cost the Americans five hours. Day three, 4 a.m. After 18 painful hours in the saddle, the Americans are still on their bikes. Air New Zealand have rested and must now ascend two mountains and rappel down a 200 meter cliff. The Kiwis have already completed this section. Yeah, really good actually. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of an abseil out there, so we're, no, we're having a good time. We had a 10 minute break out there, so getting a bit more rested now. Yeah. So. That, was, that was a pretty enjoyable run, wasn't it? The whole day has been really good. Yeah. But as far as energy and output goes and the climbing we've done today, I think we've been up and down Everest twice. If we think someone's, you know, getting too slow, we'll ask them how you're feeling on a scale of zero to ten. And, uh, like, zero is bonking or, you know, dig a hole and bury me. And ten is, hey, I'm feeling great. Jump on my back, I'll carry you up the hill. So it's a team thing where you're constantly shuffling gear around. Because if you go hard when you're not feeling like you should, trying to keep up with the team, then you'll get worse and worse until you do bonk. The Kiwis are looking forward to the rafting section. Steve's in a hurry. Good 
the B and At the rappel site, early morning snow turns to mist and rain. As the weather deteriorates, the terrain becomes treacherous. More than ever, the competitors must pay attention. Surprisingly, Andrew feels optimistic. Uh, the other day there were reasons why I was physically exhausted and, and you know, we've had a little bit of recovery time and um, I'm just eating a lot better and, and pacing myself a lot better, so I, I think that explains why I'm, you know, managing to just continue on and not have any big problems at the moment. With uh, Andy getting more comfortable, he also got faster and um, he recovered from his first uh, catastrophic cycle day where he blew himself up completely. Um, no, things are great. Despite Andrew's improved outlook, fatigue dulls his mountaineering skills. Kiwis lead the pack, five and a half hours ahead of their nearest rival, 23 hours ahead of Air New Zealand, and 33 hours in front of the Americans. While the Kiwis enjoy an exciting ride down the rapids, Andrew descends in more ways than one. As soon as I started to go downhill on that second track, I was getting a lot of pain in my feet. They'd been wet constantly. They were being rubbed by my socks and on my shoes and becoming um, blistered and painful and cracked as well. We were following a river. At that point in time, I knew that we still had a very steep, long, I think it was about a thousand metres uphill section on a scree slope before we topped out on a ridge, before we went down again to, to get to the next transition area. Eric was concerned that I was needing or wanting to have brakes at times that weren't convenient. He wanted to keep moving, which is part of what adventure racing is all about. How are you? You can't stop every 10 minutes. If you do that all the time, you get 16 teams past you. As the race progressed, it was fairly obvious that Eric and I were protagonists in an ongoing issue regarding pace and, and speed and how we were moving as a team. I wasn't particularly impressed with Eric's attitude. He was fairly condescending at times. What is that trouble? That, that third That leg. we're not doing as well as what you like? No, no, yeah. no, no. No, hey, listen, no, seriously. Our trouble is that that third, le third yeah. leg that we did, you struggled big time. Yeah, yeah. OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point that we did it in much more time than the, the average time. Yeah. And that's just, there's something wrong when you get to that. Yeah. OK? Yeah. So, what I'm saying keep going, is that, no, okay, to find what the problem is. I'm, I'm telling you okay. what the problem is. Yeah. The problem is that you didn't try and draw from our experience. You just went and did your own thing. Well, that's right, because it came out of an approach to having fun, which was the very first well, thing. No, which was the very days. first thing. There are, but the very first thing that I told you when we spoke on the phone, the very first thing was that I was going to have fun. No, Andrew, and that's when you do, oh, let me finish that. Oh, yeah, well, when you do an event, which is a team event, yeah. having fun has to be a team thing. I mean, doing a team event means that you are going to compromise at some stage, man. You know, you can't just turn around and do anything you like when you like to do it. 
as you had the tendency to do so. And and again, so you know, we're both finding even before... So, Eric, we're both finding out things about each other, right? That's what happens in the Yeah, yeah. If you want to take things so easy that you want to have your comfort uncompromised all the time, then you don't come and do the sound traverse. There were times during the race where essentially I was left alone, dealing with my feet or just getting some food or some water and the others had moved on. Uh, that reinforced to me how much the team wasn't really a team anymore. There was myself and there were the three others. We don't want to win and we, I think we've given up on this idea for a long time. But we want to race and that's where the gap is. The Kiwis race as a team. A flat tyre is no excuse to stop moving. How about then we have a really quick eat and talk to our crew about what we want set up and then piss off and get a sleep first. Yeah. And let the crew organise all our gear for us. Yeah. And it's the most efficient. That was the worst hill I've ever walked up. <laughs> a thousand metres of scree, it was horrible. Oh, I certainly, anyway, was apprehensive about the fact that I'd seen the scree slope that we were about to go up earlier on in the trek, looking across the valley. It seemed incredibly steep and, and almost unbelievable that we were going to head up that. Uh, and when I reached that area, I was my feelings about that were confirmed. A mountain behind their New Zealand, the Americans are having navigation problems. We're going up a secret way, so we haven't seen too many teams. <laughs> Despite a painful throat infection, Deb puts on a brave face. I'm doing all right. Enjoying the views. Enjoying the countryside. It's pretty great. It's beautiful up here. It's kind of nice we can't see the top, though. It's afternoon on day three. The Americans have yet to reach the rappel site. Air New Zealand climb the scree slope. Before commencing the final mountain trek, the flying Kiwis reward themselves with an hour's rest. We didn't think we'd be this so convincingly ahead, but we've raced our race and it happens to be the winning thing so far. This is the hardest one. I'd say it's the sting in the tail of the whole course in that it's a navigation challenge, I think. Any team that gets through to here should respect this leg immensely. Um, it's also stunning scenery up there, apparently. I, I'm really excited about going up there. I've never been up here. But there's big crevasses, you know, but crevasses minus the snow. It's just rock and um, quite dangerous. Stunning. I'm glad we're going to see it in the daylight. I, I hate to see it in the dark. Bloody hell. Come on. Come on, Deb. I'll give you a cashew and an M&M and a raisin. One old woman in this world keep telling them lies on me. Well, I wish to the Lord that she would die. Keep telling them lies on me. Here you go, buddy. Have some. Uh, what, can you give me two minutes? Okay, get your breath first. Yeah. Oh, baby, it ain't no lie. This life I live, low, very hard. Been all around this whole wide world. Well, I just got back today. Will I work all week, send my money home to you? Now, honey, babe, what more can I do? Oh, baby, it ain't no lie. Oh, baby, it ain't no lie. Oh, baby, it ain't no lie. This life I live blows very hard. Life I live low, very hard. 
in the fog, <laughs> in the rain. We were all pretty cold and we were all tired. It's now 10 o'clock. Hey, time flies when you're having fun, eh? <laughs> oh! <laughs> you're right, dude. Well, he damaged his feet a little bit. Good job. Well done. I was tired, my feet were in a mess. You got there, man. Thanks for helping out there. Yeah. Awesome. It was tough, long and tough. The screw slope coming up here was um, abysmal, and we were fighting to get up here before dark, which would have made it a lot harder again, which we just did, so that was good. But just very long, mate. In wind and cold, the only shelter available were the toilets. Wet, but it doesn't seem to be too cracked, but it needs to dry off somehow. I mean, there's no massive fissures, it's just really painful coming, coming down the hill. They look the well, same. It's, not, it's, not, it's good. I was in a bit of trouble, I needed to stay warm. Why don't you wrap your uh, survival blanket around yourself now? That way you'll start getting warmer because it will be insulation. It makes a huge difference. Okay. You, get, you get steamy straight away. Okay. During the day, I'm sure, with the sun shining, you would have been happy to sit outside and get, get sorted out and find your bikes. But I was feeling pretty tired and knackered and uh, enjoying the comforts of sitting on the toilet floor. The next section was a very long downhill section on the bicycles, so it was important that we did wrap up. Plastic bags on our feet, plastic bags over the body, just anything to keep us warm. Careful on the way down, there's a lot of rocks in the road, and they're big rocks, and especially at night you'll hit them before you actually see them, so There's just be the extreme care on that way, road down the way down. Be careful. Down the track on the mountain bike. It was fun, but in the middle of the night, it was difficult to see what's coming up next, and there were a few bits of rocks all over, strewn all over the road. Um, I think we were just really desperate to get back as fast as possible and have a bit of sleep before the rafting. <laughs> It won't be until first light before Air New Zealand are permitted to start the rafting section. The Kiwis have completed the final mountain trek. It was nearly sleeting when we hit the Mount Arthur summit. Yeah. It was like, get out of here, quick. We wanted to be ultra careful up there. It's so easy to get really lost. It was miserably cold. Suddenly came through just as we were up on the top. We had all our clothes on and we were still a bit cold. Day 4, 2 a.m. Exhausted, the Americans sleep in the open. Air New Zealand enjoy three hours rest in camp. The Kiwis head for the finish line. No other feeling in the world can equal it. Shampoo, shower, my own bed and unlimited sleep. Yes! 65k to go though. Bit of a bastard. Goodbye for the last time, camera. For Air New Zealand, sleep has done little to improve team morale. And how's the mood of the team been? Not good. I think I'm as tired psychologically as I am uh, physically. It's been a, been a mind game. That one I could get off my feet, could get off my bum, or at least have it sitting on something soft. And I certainly felt that I could do my part, which, yeah, probably felt a bit different to some of the other segments. With the finish line in their sights, the Kiwis enjoy easy riding on the open road. After an uncomfortable night on the mountain, the Americans are still lost. We want to go from where we are, which is right at the edge of the, there you go, to the saddle. No, wait, you're not in the saddle. The saddle's right below the S. Getting some drugs. Got a lot of those. I'll take one of them, baby. Zinc. What? I'll take a zinc. At the transition point ahead, the American support crew are concerned. We're coming up on 23 hours 
um, was hoping they'd be here sooner, but it looks like a lot of teams are not in yet. So I'm thinking that uh, that they're probably right with the pace. I hope. <laughs> Day 4, 7.13 a.m. The Kiwis cross the finish line to win the Southern Traverse. It's taken them a mere 71 hours. The flying Kiwis aren't the only ones enjoying themselves. The rafting leg was, was fun. Down the big rapids, we, it was really exciting, really enjoyable. Took about four and a half hours. Great river, beautiful scenery, and the sun was shining and things were looking up. And uh, now we're back on the bikes again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which is we're amazing. really looking forward to the bikes and the walking again, but got to do it, haven't you? It's the start of this race, it is a training, and we learn together. Now we start and the race. Now uh, we race. <laughs> <laughs> Deb needs medical attention. After 27 hours lost in the mountains, there's still a 40 kilometer ride to the doctor's surgery. <coughs> Are you feeling short of breath at all? I'm sorry. You're feeling short of breath? Nothing. She's not doing too good. She's not feeling good at all. It's, it's all yellow. Is it? When I cough, I spit up this little. A piece of spaghetti. Yes, I go. Okay. She got a lot of yeah, why don't you guys go ahead? fluid in her lungs, I think. We went up the She wants to go on, but I don't think she should, probably. She's okay to keep going. As far as I'm concerned, absolutely. <coughs> Deb will continue. Exhausted, the Americans enjoy a four hour sleep. Air New Zealand are on the final mountain trek over Mount Owen. Today's been awesome, yeah, and it's incredible up here. Very sort of high alpine with uh, some amazing limestone formations, it's great. Every route here, every trek has been a really different scenery, and it's been quite, quite awesome, really. One minute it's summer, next minute it's winter. The landscape is just as varied. <laughs> and the Morales, it's the same, but the weather here, up, down, up, down, up, <laughs> down. In French, we call good morale, bad, good, bad. A couple of times during the race, we got lost. First of all, on Mount Owen. Because of this um, fog, we don't know which is best. The terrain was very difficult. Big sinkholes in the limestone, sharp limestone, areas where um, water made the rock slippery. And it was, you know, it was really quite difficult going. There were small cans every now and again that pointed the way, but there was disagreement about which way we were going. Remember that he said the map bears no resemblance to reality. I could see where the summit was. I didn't know exactly how we could get there, but I did see a can that headed off to the right, and I thought that we should go that way. The others disagreed and wanted to traverse around the base of the summit. Democratic decision-making being what it is, you know, it was three to one. I followed them, and the way they went was fine in the sense that it took us to where we needed to go, but it took longer. Safety rules require that competitors must complete the rafting section before dark. One hour prior to the official cutoff time, the Americans float into the night. Four hours or so it took. Yeah, you guys have to about four. Yeah. Do you feel okay to continue on? She slept. 
a lot of it coming down, which is good. She's not feeling too good still. So. I don't think you'd see a race like this in the States ever with the amount of climbing. I mean, somebody said yesterday it's like already done two Everest ascents in the last three days, which I don't know if that's true. But I've been kind of keeping tabs in my head per day. And it is a lot of, whole lot of climbing. Trayson prepares her feet for the grueling Mount Owen trek, a trek which Andrew's feet are just completing. It's always the thought that, you know, it's actually 15 minutes further on than what you imagined that uh, adds to pain and suffering. <laughs> the last ascent section was steep, muddy and slippery. My feet were extremely sore and I was having trouble uh, dealing with, with that section. It's not a fun way to finish an otherwise really good day and a really good hike. I'm very pleased to come to New Zealand. Today's scenery just made it really all worthwhile. It was absolutely fantastic. We're going to the finish line now, but for the first three days it was like, all right, should we pull out tomorrow? Should we pull out tomorrow? Should we pull out tomorrow? It's only until we got to the rafting we decided, right, we're going to go for the end now. Hey, you. You're almost there, huh? Yeah, yep, you're almost here. I didn't feel lonely during the race, mainly because I knew that at each transition period I would get back to our support crew. My girlfriend Sabina was going to be there. I knew that as long as I got through each leg I'd be back with a group of people that I'd be happy to chat with and spend some time with. I guess during each leg I didn't particularly feel that way because I didn't feel close to any members of my team in any way, really. Hey, mate. How are you? Hey, well done, Andy. Sorry. Yes, we are very happy. That's your last run, man. I know, and I'm very happy. There we go. Okay. Adventure racing gets everything out of someone. If you want to know someone, so you go walking in the bush with them for 48 hours in a row with limited amounts of food and water and all that stuff. You will know everything you need to know about that person. You can't get away from it. Finishing will be good. It will feel good and um, it will be something that, you know, at the end of that first day I didn't think I was going to be doing. I haven't thought about what I'll do when I cross the finish line. I'll, actually, you know what, the first, the first thing I'll do is say thanks to these guys for putting up with me. That would be the very first thing I'll do and congratulate them on finishing with me. <laughs> Day five, only 85 kilometers to the finish line. You know, once you, you know that the end is near, you have a bit of motivation to actually get there. Two weeks ago, if somebody had suggested to me, let's go out for an 85 kilometer mountain bike ride, I would have uh, said, no, you're kidding. Suddenly, 85 kilometers seemed relatively short. I think I've got a flat tire, guys. <laughs> it's getting very hard. I must have a flat tire. Look back on in 25 years if I'm still alive and go, geez, Christ, what on earth was I doing? <laughs> As the morning mist evaporates, so too does the team's newfound optimism. We had a really, you know, good pace on the bicycles until we got lost again. <laughs> oh shit! No, we're completely wrong. We, we <laughs> no, we did the turn off. No, we didn't. We did. We turned left. Oh, hang on. Bloody map. Yeah, that's why we got confused. We've got to get back or else, or else we just... Oh, well. The turn-off was not that far back, was it? It was frustrating, but I was told by the others that this was a normal part of adventure racing, so I, I just accepted that, although there were a couple of times when I felt that I had a better inclination for which way we should be going, and I was ignored from that point of view. We've come to this one here. It just joins that one. I thought we should take the left fork. The others thought we should head right and actually start heading downhill. I pedalled off a little bit to the left and sat there on my bike and looked around. The others headed down the road to the right. I really don't think it's that way. I followed them fairly reluctantly and maybe 10 k's of downhill later we found ourselves on a major road about 30 kilometres from the finish line instead of 10 kilometres from the finish line. I told you, we should have, turned, we should have stayed up there. We're supposed to come down there. We've come down here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we set off fast and um, thought it was going to be a nice day, so we just did a little detour. <laughs> About 35 kilometers more. <laughs> Day 5, 11.22 a.m. 99 and a half hours after they started the Southern Traverse, Air New Zealand are 10th across the finish line. <laughs> it was a real different experience of the Southern Traverse, but they, uh, that's why we do the Southern Traverse. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you get. <laughs> it would have been almost too easy to have given up, so the challenge was to finish as four. I don't think we will ever do an adventure race again. <laughs>